water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations. Wait, 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 wait. Earth, water, air, fire, heart. Where is heart? There's only four. It's the four ele elements. That... No heart? No, there's no heart. No. Man, God, I cannot see that coming. Uh, it's, um, it's Ganassi on WebDM. Okay, Jim, let's talk about Ganassi and all of their forms. This is a big one. Certainly, yeah. Mo most totally. most races don't have four subclasses. Most of them don't. I mean, and 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 those that do, you know, the the permutations are a little, you know, you, you don't have to. A little closer. Yeah, a little closer. <laughs> Actually, which who all has the most elves? Probably, I'm sure. Elves yeah, I'm gonna say elves, elves have the most because they have to be the whatever. They've got to be special. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, well, technically Dragonborn, but that's only their resistance and breath weapon. They have like, yeah. you know, they have 10 versions oh, technically, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, even yeah. though it's not really that different not other really than, different. you know, the difference is elemental. Sure, sure, sure. But it's the same Speaking with Ganassi. Of. Speaking And here of. we are. We've wrapped it back around. The Ganassi are a plain touched uh, race that's first sees appearance in uh, second edition, Plain Walker's Handbook, which mm -hmm. is a great just awesome book for any kind of like planar campaigns it's probably like in my top three planescape books that that's just fun to read and and look you know and flip through mm -hmm. the basic idea is that they are the elemental equivalents of tieflings and asimar right right, right. They, they are those genies and and you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whatever uh, uh, yeah and I, I'm, I'm sure in 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 planescape how connected they were with genies or if it was just like they were connected with the planes there planescape had this wonderful sort of vagueness about it uh, in a lot of ways but then of course they show up in third edition as sort of a part of uh Faerun and tied to the history of Kalimshan and, and uh, Zakara, I believe. Uh, although, you know, Zakara, aka al Qadim, hasn't really been updated in several editions, so I don't know how it still fits in with mm -hmm. everything in Faerun, if, if at all, anymore. Their lore as, as being the offspring of genies and mortals sort of gets solidified there. They, they uh, at least uh, those who are, uh, those Ganassi that are a part of the Jinn or Freight, uh, lineages or, or take up positions of nobility or you know they're basically the aristocracy the place like Kalimshan right yeah they're the spoiled rich kids otherwise I don't feel like they've got a lot going on for them in terms of like history or or like a, a big lore uh, uh you know th that you can wrap your head around or, or base a character off of mm -hmm. they seem to be one of uh one of those groups of, of races that are like included for the sake of completeness uh, or for the you know the few uh, you know people who really love to play them, but I don't know. It kind of seems like they get forgotten about. Like mm -hmm. not that many people play them. They don't. I don't really see that much use. And well, once again, you know, that's why they're on a room in the <sighs> forgotten realms. Forgotten, not forgotten about. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so I know that every time I see one of those charts, uh, you know, whether it's from uh, you know like the. Uh, D and D Beyond developers, uh, sort of like showing what everybody's making with the character builder, or like other kinds of uh, you know Wizards of the Coast surveys themselves, and it's usually see Ganassi like way down at the bottom, like less than a percentage of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a really niche. It's a really niche one. For those of you who've been requesting Ganassi, uh, you're welcome, uh, and, and, and maybe you'll find something you like here. Yeah, and for those of you who thought we were going to do a video <laughs> on ganache. I'm sorry, it's not as tasty, but we will make it as light and fluffy yeah, as possible. I'm sorry you're not gonna, your ganache is gonna see what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's the truffle with uh, <laughs> words like this. Anyway, you know, we kind of, kind of touched on the, 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 the history, uh, you know, they're, yeah. they're not really that, that, that used, although I, I, I have seen them used around. I know Lindy played an Eric uh -huh, Ganassi uh -huh. for a while, yeah. it, very light and airy character, yeah. really fit. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of those. I, I don't pl I've played a, a fire Ganassi uh, um, evoker uh, mm -hmm. who was, you know, all fire magic all the time. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably just like, oh, yeah, it's got a fire genie dad or something, you know. Yeah. And to me, it's less about like the lineage of the Ganassi. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something, you know, whatever. Well, uh, Salamander just, or I, Fire Snake or Yeah, I'm just imagining a fire Ganassi <laughs> teenager yelling at his genie father. Yeah. Like, you know what? I wish, Dad. I wish you weren't my dad. Yeah. <laughs> He had one wish left. <laughs> I really like them, and and I think though in fifth edition they're underserved. I I, I find myself sort of underwhelmed uh, by them mechanically, and and 
And also sort of like, there was a lot of cool stuff going on with Ganassi in fourth edition that didn't get ported over, mm -hmm. right? And so like, it, it's one of the many things where there's like this, because of the break with lore and the, 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 the you know wanting to do new things with the lore and everything, there's a lot of really cool stuff in fourth edition that way that just gets kind of, it's not part of the continuity of D&D &D lore, it represents a break from it, and so you don't necessarily see much of it anymore. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll talk a bit more about what that might mean for your game uh, later, but. Because yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, they do seem a little underwhelming, because I mean, like overall, yeah. they basically, all of them get a plus two to con. Which is nice, but I'm not, I, I'm never like, man, I, I, I'm going to choose a class that has a primary bonus in Constitution. I, you know, that's about... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that helps your all your spellcasters for, for con saves for sure, maintaining yeah. concentration, and it's an extra hit point. Sure. But it's, like, but it's Constitution, like... Eh, yeah. It's not the most exciting of abilities, you don't... You know what I mean? Like, how many characters do you base Constitution around? I don't know. I, I will gripe about it all day long, though, so we can move on. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I understand. But that's, like, it, though, as far yeah. as overall, like, all of them get this, and then each subclass get a little something extra. Yeah. So starting with air, yeah. you get another a plus one dex. Um, you can hold your breath indefinitely. Sure. As long as you're not incapacitated. Uh -huh. Uh, and then you get the w Mingle with Wind, which allows you to cast Levitate once per, basically once a day. Yeah. Uh, and Con is your casting stat. Yeah. Um, as opposed to anything else. So yes. at least your plus two to Con helps you with that DC. I guess, yeah. Uh, if you're not a caster. It, but but then that kind of sucks because what if you're a caster and now you're going to cast Levitate but you got a 12 Con because, hey, you had the plus two. Uh, yeah, this is one of those things where I allow casters, who, you know, if you're from a, if you've got a fantasy race that has uh, innate spell casting, then you kind of like, when you get to those levels where you would be able to cast those spells, mm -hmm. you can use your spell slots and ability modifier to cast them. Like you just know them. Yeah. So I would say an Aragonasi like knows levitate, and, and if they if they're playing like a wizard or a sorcerer or something, then when it get, they get to third level, they can just add that to their mm -hmm. uh, spell list. And to me, that's just like I don't know. It, it makes sense, especially with how magic rich D and the fifth edition D and D worlds are, mm -hmm. and just how much magic gets thrown around. It seems like nitpicky to go like oh yeah you're a wizard you know you're a storm sorcerer <laughs> you know yeah. ergonazi like yeah you're a wizard airy yeah right <laughs> thank you uh, <laughs> and uh, i try uh, but when i look at the, the air is the one where i i really look at uh look at the mechanical benefits they get from it i'm just like that that's it like you get one spell once a day and you can hold your breath all i can think of is like eric cocker can fly and they get weapons and they get weapons right so i i'm, <laughs> in, I'm imagining it right like this you know the ergonauts here are, are, are on these earthbergs in in the plane of air and it's like they can't necessarily get around the place that they're maybe born into uh, or mm -hmm. something so I, ways that I would look at uh, change them are looking to give them some kind of fly speed even if it's not as good as wings you mm -hmm. know even if it's like you have to land at the end of your movement you know but for that 30 feet you can go wherever you want you know mm -hmm. you can or you can double move you can I double mean, move yeah you know you get up over a, a big wall or something or really you know uh, fly up a cliff or something so it's like maybe maybe it's more like jumping and it looks more like uh, you know wuxia style sort of like leaping across the tops of bamboo trees or you know, well, I mean, you look gutter. like Aang in The Last Airbender. Certainly, which, right, I mean, right. One of the things that I like about what the promise of some of the other uh, subclasses, uh, or sorry, sub-races are for Ganassi is that their special abilities are beneficial to the group as a whole. And so what I would want to do for some of these is like maybe say, all right, Air, maybe you can, maybe you got this levitate, but it affects a group of people or like a radius of some kind. Yeah. Or you have a, a you know, you got your levitate for yourself and then later on you've got like a, a short-term group fly so that you can like help people you know, with that or something. Mm -hmm. Even if you do need a prop to sort of catch the air uh, to, to get them to move. Um, I would choose that over something like giving them a, the gust cantrip or shocking grasp or some other kind of like uh, ability. You know, so a group yeah. buff is what I'm looking for. Earth, earth, earth. Uh, you get a plus one of strength. Yeah. That's, you know, that's fun. Not it makes bad. sense. Sure. Uh, you get your earth walk, which uh -huh. means, you know, if there's difficult terrain, it doesn't cost you extra movement as long as it's made of earth or stone, yep. which totally see. It's kind of an earth glide ability. Sure, sure. Um, and then the last thing is pass without a trace. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess I get, you know, you, you can walk around really quietly on earth and you don't leave footprints because, you know, magic. 
I guess, but um, they don't limit it to natural earth or or natural stone, right? Or unless did I miss that? I don't. I don't see that part. That, but yeah. that's that's the part where I'm like, so it just works anywhere. So it works anywhere. Yeah, even where you're um, not. Yeah. I, I, so it, it 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 it. This is one of those where I find that fifth edition D and D has this weird like they hold back somewhere whenever there's like a, a, you know the the fluff versus the crunch. Yeah. You know, and I feel like a lot of times there's this there's this evocative sort of like powerful narrative that they're building up through the descriptive text and everything. And then when we get to the mechanics, it's usually just like a spell they can do once uh, or something. And so I, I find this one's the one where I'm like, really? Like, first off, merge with stone makes me think that they have a permanent merge with like meld into stone no, type yeah, well ability. you know when you read merge with stone and you're like oh they can cast this pass without a trace spell it's like why, why can't they just yeah yeah we disappear just, into the earth why can't they just why don't they have a burrow speed right like to me that would be the big one for merge with earth is they they can burrow in loose earth and and maybe they leave behind a, a small tunnel that their party can kind of follow them behind mm -hmm. They're um, people. That's what I don't necessarily get. It's not that Pass Without Trace isn't, first off, it's a great spell. And yeah. it can be worked into the, the flavor of Ganassi, but then you want to say, like, there's restrictions. Like, it's not going to work in a wooden building. You know, it's not, it might work underground as long as you're, you know, as long as it's not a bunch of, like, worked stone blocks that mm -hmm. are around you. Or even maybe not even that restriction, you know? Because, yeah. come on. Anyway, that's, that's what I would, would look at. I think it needs the least... Uh, of changes to make to bring it more in line with its uh, fiction, if that makes sense. Maybe resistance, something like that. You know, resistance to slashing weapons or something, you know, from their rocky Ooh. skin. You know, like it's not full on, you know, uh, BPS, but it's it's enough. You yeah, know? yeah, you don't want it all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure on Pass Without a Trace. Uh, yeah, no, it does not specify. Arthur. Oh, no, no. The spell one. The spell is just supposed to work almost, you know, Oh, I just, meant, I just meant the, uh, flavor, oh, the, the, the flavor text gotcha. around it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You can cast this as long as... Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, sure. uh, you know, like they did with the previous ability. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, you to make them take their boots off, at least. Mm -hmm. It's this weird thing with air and earth where they get basically, like, uh, a second-level spell. Basically get a second-level spell, yeah. And then we're going to move into fire and water, which basically get a cantrip and a First level spell. Basically. Because fire is the one that's just like, why aren't you taking this version? Um, because For plus one, one intelligence, mm -hmm. hey, that's great. You know, sure. especially if you're a caster, a wizard. Sure. sure. But other than that... Mm -hmm. Eldritch Knight, you can see a fire, uh, you know, a fire Eldritch Knight. Yeah, fire Eldritch Knight. But for the most part, you know, arcane casting. Yeah. But dark vision 60 feet. Yes, which is the only Ganassi that gets it. Um, I do love in the text how it says, like, you see everything in, like, shades of red, though. I get, that's the other thing. Is it, is 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 it if, if it's? I guess the, I see that. I, I always want to go. Would you like, use? I say I would use that against them though. I'm sorry, but in my world, if I knew some Ganassi, they're like, oh yeah, they all see this way. Yeah, yeah. You can start messing with people in the dark and just having everything in red. So oh, it starts sure. messing yeah, yeah. with their with their dark vision. Mm -hmm, you can start mm -hmm. messing with like depth perception. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do special uh, have a special like Ganassi dungeon. Um, <laughs> anyway, nice but uh, dark vision, fire resistance, which. It's one of the, you know it's one of the largest most ubiquitous damage types in the game. Sure, yeah. Reach to the blaze, which this is where you get your produce flame cantrip. And yeah. You get at third level, uh, which there is at least a delay. You get burning hands uh, once per long rest. And you cast it as a first level spell, which sure. that'll you know that'll yeah. be okay for first few, few levels. I mean, really, like by the time you get to third level, you're starting to get like I mean, it is an area of effect, and that's yeah. literally it. You know. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. Like, I, Burning Hands is one of those that's like every edition seems to get not worse and worse, but just like less and less impressive mm -hmm. for me. And so, like, I I will look at it and I'll just go like, ah, I, I'm probably gonna cast this, I'm not gonna cast this spell anymore after third level. You know, burning hands is something that that's a first level, second level type spell in my mind. And, and then after those levels, you sort of like use those first level slots for other things, and you move on to like scorching ray or Agnes R scorcher or something if you want. There's a couple things going on with fire that I that I think are interesting. I think you could use it as a, a, a sub in for tiefling, you know, or, or, or another kind of like touched by the infernal sort oh, of, totally. uh, 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 you know, option. Um, and the fact that they get dark vision, the fact that they seem to lend themselves towards arcane casters, I think they do make for the strongest of the four, um, you know, dark vision, fire resistance, having 
you know, at least an attack cantrip, right? Produce flame isn't the worst, uh, you know, uh, a cantrip to have, and you, you always are at least have something. Mm -hmm. um, if you're playing a wizard, it's the spell you don't normally get access to. Uh, but... Well, and that's very true. <laughs> but I, 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 well, I mean, you know, dark vision doesn't mean you can see completely in the dark, except that you can. Except that... The, and in, then produce in, flame produces light. It produces light, yeah, for one, right? So <laughs> it, to me, it's, it's the, a case of, like, so many of the race options in 5th edition have dark vision, that it's starting to get to the point where it's like, if you don't have it, it's the weird, you're the odd one out. And mm -hmm. it used to be so much the opposite. It used to be like, the assumption was like, yeah, you know, there's not really going to be someone here who can, uh, you know, one, one of us will be able to see in the dark here, like the proper dark. And if there's elves, like, we don't need that much light, they'll be fine. But the way the fact they keep like sort of simplifying it and simplifying it, and, and of course they got rid of infravision and the the... The split between uh, low light and dark vision, uh, you know, as well. So you're you're now just down to like normal and dark vision, and with the fact that so many uh, race options have dark vision, it, like I said, it really sticks out when you don't. And so I like, I kind of wish it was either my my personal preference would be that no one had dark vision, like that just no player characters have it. It might make sense for them too. Maybe they can see better in like. Starlight or something like that. Maybe for a fire ganasi, the flames treat the area of brightness of fire as doubled, right? So if it's like a torch, if they've got a torch, then their area of bright light for them is doubled. Yeah, and they just see better in firelight. That's how. That's maybe how I would do it. Well, I mean, I could also, you know, if you were going to bring back in for vision, I would think that fire ganasi, fire ganasi would have it. Yeah, you can see your heat. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's yeah. the thing is, it's all about heat with them. Yeah. And, it is, and, and I, there are issues surrounding infravision and the like, and we've kind of, this, I didn't expect to have a big tangent on it in this, the middle of this, but, I, you know, something different, something other than just, like, you have it or do you don't, and, mm -hmm. like, if you're the one person in the group that doesn't have dark vision, it kind of, like, sucks, but at the oh. same time, like, do you all want a disadvantage on your perception checks that badly? Like... Yeah, still yeah. need a light source. <laughs> oh God, we got a lot of torch because Terry's here. Yeah, but yeah. you find that you probably even with like uh, you know the the monsters that you're fighting, you know, they don't want disadvantage on their perception checks if they're on patrol. They mm -hmm. probably have light sources too. Of course, water wisdom plus one. Yeah, uh, you got to keep with that Katara healing spirit. Oh, sure. Acid resistance, uh, which yep, uh, I get that with water. You can diffuse. Uh, and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, see, I can see that with water. Sure. Disperse acid. Uh, yeah. Amphibious, uh, breathing air or water, right. which you know, uh, well, you don't get a, you don't get really get a swim speed, which I don't know. I mean, yeah. To me, if you, if you're a water ganasi, shouldn't you have some version? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought I, like, this is one of those things where <laughs> I've glossed over it so much. I just assumed they had a swim speed. And I was like looking at their stats this morning, and I wrote down, "I don't think they got swim speed," and it's like, yeah, they don't. If th they don't. Like that's mm -hmm. a, that's actually surprising. I was gonna say like they should have a faster swim speed than their land speed. You know, like they are creatures of water. They should have faster swim speeds than like merfolk mm -hmm. and and tritons and and the like. You know, mm -hmm. they are. In literally immersed in their element, uh, yeah, yeah. and so I, I would, I'd give them a swim speed of forty uh, as base, you yeah, know, and like plus ten move, mm -hmm, just a plus ten, and and you know anything else, obviously on top of that is is gravy. Um, Call to the wave is what shape water and then uh, create uh, create wa just create water, I guess. Uh, create destroy water. Create destroy uh, water. Yeah, same thing. Get it at third level. Cast it as a second level spell. Sure, sure. Uh, which I find that interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, it probably just generates more. If I had my druthers, they would all have one cantrip and one second level spell. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the second level spell ideally has some kind of group benefit, or there is like a passive. Uh, group benefit for everybody. So for water, I would go like, hey, you can do this, and then also like once a day, you can bless a certain number of people to like be able to breathe in the water, or you can like extend a, a radius of airy water out to from 10 feet from you for an hour or something, or 15 yeah. minutes or whatever, or, you know. Or of water breath. Or of water breath, you know, or of water breath for just a little bit, just because it's like, I, I like I like the idea of of Ganassi extending these benefits because they represent creatures from these inhospitable planes, these places where it's hard to go, and I kind of think if you're if you've gone to the trouble of rolling up one of these Ganassi, then you should the, at the very least you should be able to allow the rest of your party to adventure, 
and have an adventure in the environment that you're at home in. So if mm -hmm. it's burrow, or sorry, if it's earth, then you can burrow through loose earth, creating other tunnels for your party to follow. Mm -hmm. If it's air, it's like a maybe a, a feather fall for everyone, uh, you know, if you're just near them, or like uh, an extension of a, a brief, uh, you know, short-term flight, something like that. Fire might be a, a radius of fire protection that just like, you know, it, it cancels out the effects of extreme heat and provides fire resistance. And, you know, maybe water is like that breathable air, or, or sorry, breathable water uh, or, or a swim speed for everybody so that they don't have to suffer uh, the, the penalties to using weapons underwater, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's how I would think of adding abilities to the Ganassi, just because, like, they do need more. I, I don't think that these are enough. And, you know, they're made... Fairly early on in D&D 5th Edition's life cycle, it seems like they're just ported over the 3rd Edition stats for them instead of like adding on and looking at all the, like I was just looking at it on uh, this morning for research for the, the show and I was like, God, 4th Edition had so much stuff for Ganassi. And I, I'm not familiar with it, I, I'm reading any of the books for it, it was more just like looking at an index and I was like, surely there's stuff in here that will make... It, that would just like add something to it. I'm kind of curious about the conceptual stuff now because mm -hmm. mechanically I, I would add things to them, but I feel like without a solid concept for what they are yeah. and what a Ganassi is and, and how they fit into your game worlds, we're just like adding on cool stuff without any reference, right? Right, right, right. Well, I think one, one place to look conceptually is a game that we talk about all the time, even yeah. for its faults. Sure, sure. Which is Exalted. Yes. And the Dragonborn. The, yeah. Now, yeah. don't be confused. They're called Dragonborn there, but they're elemental. Sure, sure. They're the Terrestrial Exalted, um, and, and, and uh, sometimes called Dragonborn, sometimes called Dragonblooded. Dragonblooded, Some, yeah. They've, they've got a lot of different names and setting, and, and they have, of course, the, the, their uh, five elements there. They've, they have the classical four plus wood, which mm -hmm. I guess is, uh, I'm not mistaken, is like, sort of like in Chinese alchemy. That's their, those are their elements, but I can't remember if there's metal in, uh, for the Terrestrial Exalted. I don't think so. I don't think there was. I think I might be thinking of another form of ele elemental magic system. <laughs> the, uh, the Codex Alara from uh, And then Richard. there were seven. Right. We're going to add spirit. <laughs> 52 or, so. elements. The Terrestrial Exalted are, um, you know, they are the lowest form of Exalted in creation. Uh, they're meant to be the sort of foot soldiers and, and assistants and servants of the Solar Exalted and through machinations and cosmic uh, betrayals. Uh, they end up as the rulers of the biggest empire in creation with the uh, sidereal exalted being kind of like the behind the scenes, uh, behind mm -hmm. the throne advisors. And so a lot of terrestrial exalted abilities are based around teamwork. They're based around the fact that like they are weaker than the more powerful solar and lunar exalted that they hunt. So they have to coordinate and cooperate and act as a team against these like demigods that they're trying to take down and so for me that's maybe where i get like the group buff stuff from mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of in exalted they have a lot of abilities that extend to you know their followers and team members and things mm -hmm. like that so i like it because it's sort of like it, i like taking that idea of of like uh, an elite an aristocracy that is suffused with magical power that that represents their connection to the land uh, there are shades of birthright in that idea. There are mm -hmm. shades of the dragon mark houses in Eberron. Yeah, yeah. And just like having this elemental elite, these rulers that use their magical powers, use their connection to the elements, sort of like justify their right to rule is kind of cool. And you can like, them, guess what? There's <laughs> Ganassi have a big blank space <laughs> where you can uh, you know, sort of like fill in. Yeah. Um, although that's kind of like Callum Shan, but yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but I, I also like the idea of them conferring some some boons yeah. to others. Yes. Considering their lineage coming from genies, from Jin, from Afrit, who are used to making deals yeah. and yeah. bestowing things upon others. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, to me, it just, it falls in line. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I completely support, uh, completely support that, and, that and, kind and of, that, that way of thinking about it. Yeah. And so, like, another way, another way of sort of thinking about it, if you're, if you're thinking mechanically, is to take examples from those terrestrial exalted and see if there's not ways to change those charms and abilities and mm -hmm. the like from, from the exalted system uh, to D&D &D and look and see, like, all right, well, air... Uh, exalted tend to be good with bows and, and sneaking and, and these sorts of things. Maybe I can translate that to my Ganassi and they extend an aura of, I don't know, 
granting advantage on ranged attacks, uh, you know, for a certain amount of time, or extending the range that ranged attacks can, you know, uh, what counts as short range, something like that, uh, might be kind of interesting, cool, and inspiration from other games. It's usually a fun way to add something new. So. Any character from Avatar: The Last Airbender, yeah, is a good a lot place good conceptually to start mm -hmm. because there are many versions of benders. Yes, and uh, I mean, there's some that are fi more fighting types, but they're still like you know bringing rocks up and hitting them around yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So you know, whether it's an Earth Ganassi uh, that's doing that kind of thing, or um, like a like a water bender who, sure, you know, if they're a, if they're a monk and it's all about the ebb and flow, it really is just like pinning down like which one do you want to do? Sure, sure. You want sure. to be a warlock and be Sparky Sparky Boom Man <laughs> with your freaking Eldritch Blast? Like yeah. it's literally like how I see that. He basically be a warlock that spends his spell slots and his abilities to pump, literally pump up his Eldritch Blast to fireball level damage. Sure. Well, there's that one invocation that like or at least it was in the ua i don't know if it made it into xanathar's but it's like whenever you cast eldritch blast you you can you can accompany it with a fireball um just like the flames of mephistopheles or something mm -hmm. uh, one of them. so it's like there is some there's something like that and I, th I could definitely see you reflavoring a lot of these to be like warlock you know to be like the result of warlock patrons mm -hmm. and and where the ganasi you go the opposite route you know like i'm not going to worry anything about where the place of these people as a culture is in the world. I am an Earth Ganassi because I, that is reflective of my magic. And I'm otherwise just a person. Yeah, but, I was a human and you know, I made this deal. Now yeah, I'm this. Now I'm like this. And so it's a way of like having some cool magic uh, and, and ma magic and mystical elements to your character. And, and yet you don't, you're not beholden to say be a stone sorcerer or a, a wizard or druid who only takes earth magic. You can just sort of mix things up. So that is another way of kind of looking at it. It could represent that, that these are, represent like martial traditions or, or, or sort of like fighting societies or something where, you know, you become an air ganasi by practicing this certain martial art, or you become an earth ganasi because you know, we're, we're training with our great big mauls and axes over here and, and learning from Earth-type creatures. Yeah, the badger mauls are telling you how to fight. Yeah, they're telling you how to fight. And so, like, the Ganassi is not so much, like, represents a culture you come from or, or a distinct uh, peoples, which is, like, the influence of the magic on you as a person. Yeah, man, it's just a state of mind. Products of planar influence or, or the products of, like, magical bloodlines uh, could easily be mm -hmm. another. One of my campaign worlds, like, the ruling... Uh, family has multiple planar influenced branches of the family. Yeah. And so it's like, this is the branch of the family that has always dealt with celestials. This is the branch of the family that's always dealt with Jin. And so like they have these inter, uh, you can tell which part of the royal family you're dealing with by whether it's an Asimar, a Ganassi, or a Tiefling. And uh, it doesn't matter, they're all part of the same family, but um, they have rivalries in amongst themselves and go off and form their own, uh, you know, cadet branches and, and, and the like. So it, it's one of those things where it's like, if you know you're dealing with someone plain touched, you know that they're a noble in some mm -hmm. way, and you know that they are, uh, that they got that way so that they could wield some badass magic. Yeah. So that's sort of how that, how that setting uh, kind of handles mm -hmm. it. Some things to think about when you're thinking about Ganassi and you're thinking about the place uh, in their world or, or how you're going to play one is consider maybe looking at uh, mortals other than human. We'll use Azer as an example here. Azer are often, they kind of look like dwarves, they sort of have a, a similar dwarf feel to them. So like a fire Ganassi dwarf might just be an Azer. Like that just might be a different name for them. Or it might just be, you know, what they don't live on the plane of fire anymore, so you're not like infused with that elemental fire. You're on the material plane now, but you know, you're still a fire dwarf, <laughs> you know, or, or earth ganasi dwarf. It's like the, to me, like the big obvious one, Yeah, you know, um, that those dwarves who never leave the mountain become earth ganasi, you know, uh, and maybe that's desirable. Maybe it's not. Um, you sort of do the same with like elves. So like elves really map easily to water and wind or water and uh, air, Yeah, yeah. you know, so you can almost, if you wanted, like take things from dwarf or elf and map them on to Ganassi, and if you want to just outright replace them and say like, yeah, there are no elves in this world, but there are these ephemeral, uh, you know, sort of creatures, these airy uh, slifts or whatever you want, want to call them, and, or, uh, you know, Undine who, you know, ha inhabit the coastal waters and live in coral cities just off the, the shore there. Um, 
that could easily replace a lot of the more traditional fantasy races in your world. You'd have something exotic, something that's magical, clearly, something that's familiar. You know, most people are at least familiar with Ganassi. And yet it's not the same, you know, mm -hmm. not elves, not dwarves. It's something different. Yeah. So I think that that could be a, a fun way to kind of look at them. Certainly just like, I don't know, you've got a water Ganassi goblin. The Aquatic Adventures, there's like all kinds of water Ganassi merfolk. And mm -hmm. they are just really common. You know, you see them all over the place. Aqua gobbles. And the other thing to consider with them is to just like look and see. Like maybe you want different elements. Um, part of fourth edition that they had were, were they added on um, to the classic four uh, electricity. So they, they split uh, wind and, and storm into two. Uh, which I don't necessarily like because otherwise air doesn't have a damage type associated with it. <laughs> just a lot of wind. It's just a it lot just of blows wind. Really hard. I yeah. mean, yeah, it can take a mountain down <laughs> right. after a few it millennia. Takes a while. It takes a while. <laughs> um, but then they also had sort of corrupted uh, Ganassi, which were called caustic, cinder, plague, and void. And so caustic soul, Ganassi is acid and the like, et cetera. Cinder's ash. Uh, you get it. And then uh, they had Athos, which is the world of Dark Sun, had its own uh, unique Ganassi, which consisted of Ember Soul, Magma Soul, Sand Soul, and Sun Soul. Uh, and then I think third also had para elemental Ganassi, so that would have I, been I vaguely remember ice, that. magma, uh, ooze, mud, and then um, either smoke or steam yeah. usually. So, like you can do things like that. It, it, maybe you enjoy figuring out what the base elements of your world are, and they're not earth, air, fire, and water. Uh, so I, it's worth thinking about, worth uh, tying into your uh, setting. And, uh, I don't know, just do, doing something unique and different with them. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. WebDM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the Web Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, we've got games on Twitch every week, and they're archived on our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays. Thanks for watching. We pick it up, so, we, so let's pick it up from there. You see the black dragon in the distance, that'll be the thing we say next, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so remove that part of the castle. Okay. Let's see if this will stay. It stays. It should, yeah. Flowers are still standing. Okay. Yeah. We're just going to sit this down. And this is the thing. <laughs> because nobody... Yeah, anyway. To me, this is funny as shit. Yeah. It's also <laughs> sections <laughs> of the castle. As I'm right. like... Now I'm just going to be like... It, yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. So you, so you would have cut to him doing a thing. Okay. Cut to me moving my mini. Yeah, yeah. So you see the you see the black dragon in uh, the distance. Uh, uh. It's approaching the castle. Oh right wow! Now. Okay, yeah. What yeah. would you like to do? Well, I mean, if it's approaching the castle and, and my, you know that's where all my guys are, I'm, I'm gonna try to sneak up uh, sneak up on it. Okay, yeah. let me let me see that stealth check. All right. Okay. Oh, you know, rolled off the book. You know, you know, I always roll on my uh, book. No, no, you know? I, yeah, it's yeah. fine. I understand that. Ah, uh, mm, look at that. That's an eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try, let's try it again. 